Oh man, I should just go ahead and apologize right up front. I really let this one slip through the cracks. More than a year ago, I recorded an interview with Peter Hollins, who is a YouTube music superstar, and I published, uh, got two different episodes out of that material. Uh, I also had a material for a third episode, which I kind of got sidetracked and forgot about and just realized, oh my God, I never published this awesome final section from that interview. And let me tell you, this is like a master class, a condensed version of a like MBA on how to establish uh, and monetize and leverage a YouTube channel for musicians. So listen up to this episode. It's short, sweet, and it packs a mean punch. I'm Bob Baker, and this is the Music Marketing Podcast, episode 120. Welcome to the Music Marketing Podcast, where I share marketing and career advice for musicians, singers, songwriters, and music business pros just like you. If you don't already, please subscribe to the audio podcast in iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, or wherever you consume such products. And if you're catching the YouTube version, please, by all means, subscribe to the channel there. So in the meantime, I'm going to play what's left of the Peter Hollins interview. Take notes. Listen up. This is a good one. What are some of the ways that you have monetized uh, YouTube or that other artists should be aware of that they can do with YouTube? Even today with all of the other options out there, I believe for a fact that YouTube is the number one place that you should be looking to create your hub on the internet. YouTube truly does believe in creators. It gives so much value back to us in the way of allowing us to push people to other platforms to be able to monetize basically the attention that we are creating on on YouTube. So you have the ability as an artist to to make money off of ad revenue, although I would never at all tell a fellow artist that that is something that you should completely count on as like a large, large portion of your revenue model. I I think it is one of those cookie jars where you're going to want your hand in, but really what YouTube is, is that free marketing worldwide device to distribute your content, right? So for a musician, content is king and distribution is queen. Our content is the audio. It's what we create in the studio. Uh, The distribution is the, is the video method. And if the king and queen aren't married and and you don't have a music video to distribute that song, um, then you aren't doing your due diligence as, uh, as a musician to get the full potential of each and every uh, creation. So on YouTube, what, what you're doing is you're putting your brand out there. So brand recognition is number one thing that we should be concentrating on currently as, as artists, because You want your music, in my opinion, you want your music on every single streaming device. You want people to be able to find you on every single social media site because people have, depending on the demographic, they have different platforms that they focus on, right? The younger demographic is really, really concentrated on uh, Snapchat, Instagram, and like musically. The older demographic uh, is basically living specifically on mailing lists and Facebook. And depending upon, you know, if we're talking about the older female or the you know, the 35 year old male, like different social media sites kind of focus on that exact demo. And so on, on YouTube, that's kind of where you want to push people towards because it gives you the most value back, both in that ad revenue, but mostly in the fact that like literally on that platform, I can create annotations with, with a, with a tap of a button, both on mobile and desktop that send people to stream my music, to purchase my music, to become a patron on Patreon to sign up to my mailing list. And that type of value isn't offered on any other worldwide streaming platform, whether we're talking about I- anything else. And so I love YouTube for that reason. Wow, that was like, a, that's like right there, that last five minutes or so was like a master class on how to, how to leverage social media in the modern era for creators of all types. That was fantastic. Um, the annotations that you mentioned, I think, are now more specifically, they're, they're cards, the YouTube cards, and then there's like the new end screen thing, too, that they just yeah, introduced. Yeah. yeah, the end screen. I call that annotations 2.0. And the cards it was kind of like the stopgap in between where we are now with the end screen. Those never really had a really good click-through ratio. And so 
although I do use those because they do work on mobile, they don't function as well as these end screen cards do. And so I like calling them annotations 2.0. I think it's just a better, uh, better name for them. So if I was giving advice to a musician uh, listening, it is quintessential for you to create that, le- that last 20 seconds on end of your end screen where you are pushing towards, number one, other content because you want to keep them on the platform because the longer you keep them on the platform, the more YouTube will reward you for that watch time retention. Their algorithm currently is now really focused on keeping people on the platform. So if you start that uh, watch session and then they stay watching your content for like 30 minutes or even more importantly, they start watching your video and then they they end up watching for two hours, even if it's other people's content, you're rewarded for that. So you you want that end screen to give this like beautiful reciprocal circle of just never ending content. So one of the things on your end screen, you should do about you know two to four of them. One should at least be watch, pushing to another video. One, in my opinion, depending upon where you are in your career, should always be pushing to a way to monetize, whether this is Patreon, whether this is iTunes, whether this is merchandise, you know, signed CDs, something that's great net revenue. And another push, in my opinion, it's really nice to not just like hard sell yourself, but maybe you showcase um, something else that you love, right? Whether it's maybe not even something that's music, but you're trying to provide value to your fan base of like, check out the secret link or check out this thing that I really love. And I believe during that, that last 20 seconds, you as a musician need to be on screen speaking to your audience because us as musicians don't ever have the chance to showcase ourselves as people, as personalities. We are a product. We're a production. And so I think it's quintessential now in this new modern era of like reality TV of like everyone wanting to know more about you, that you actually come on screen. You're a person. You talk about what you love, why you're here, what's your passion. And you want to basically invite your audience into well, into your, you know, like into your living room, into where, into your personality. You want to let them in, and the more you do so, the more you'll turn that initial watcher in that funnel of like someone's a, ra- a random casual fan, and then they're a, a monthly active, and then they're a the weekly active, and then they're a daily active, and then they become a patron, and then they become an evangelist. The more you let them into who you are, the more you become closer and one with them. The more they're going to be part of your Holland's family, right, or part of your whatever crew or whatever you want to call your 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 people. So. Cool, and I and, and I always add to that list of things that you want to send people to. Yeah, other videos. You meant so you said something that you so something that you're selling. Like in my case, I'll link to a page that gives them more information about one of my books if I'm focusing on that in a particular video. Mm-hmm. But another thing, I'm a big uh, advocate of of the building the email list, which you mentioned for some demographics in particular. But uh, that's another way that you can use it. Send them to your opt in page to get on your your email list. And isn't it helpful to have like a like a one primary call to action instead of bombarding people with multiple things. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think the cool thing is that you have that one primary call to action that you can do verbally with yourself on the screen, but giving them the option to also like choose their own destiny through the end screen annotations 2.0, I think is, is also important because not always will somebody want to do your number one push call to action because usually it's you asking them to do something that only really a, a very small fraction of your audience will want to do. And a lot of these people truly aren't even plugged into uh, YouTube as a whole, right? I mean, I could look at my annotation, I mean, my analytics right now and tell you that, you know, 38, 39% of the people who are actually digesting my content are even subscribed or even logged in to the uh, YouTube system. So a lot of these people are very casual, very, very casual fans. And so you want to you want to basically offer options to people who are of you know different different degrees of that funnel that I described. Right. So, yeah, that's another crucial thing is realizing people are consuming this in different ways and they're not all sitting on the edge of their of their seats. <laughs> hanging on your every word or every mm-hmm. note. Some of them are and you want to cater to to those but also uh, you got to keep all that in mind when you're creating content. I don't know about you, but I thought that was amazing. Did you take notes? Did you catch all of the helpful advice and tips that he packed in there about how to utilize your channel, what to do with the final 20 seconds of your video, uh, how to use the end screens, which he calls annotations 2.0. So much great stuff in that interview. So as I always like to do, what do you think? What are your thoughts on the advice that Peter had to dish out? What would you like to add to it? Look around wherever you're consuming this. If there's a way to leave a comment, please do so now.
You can also shoot me an email. It's real easy to do. It's bob at bob hyphen baker.com. Yes, there's a hyphen or dash between my first and last name, bob at bob hyphen baker.com. You can shoot me a message and uh, let me know what you think about this or any other topic related to music and the arts. And in addition to that, I want to encourage you to get on the music marketing VIP list. Speaking of email, I'll even give you a collection of music promotion ebooks and tip sheets when you do. Just go to thebuzzfactor.com, click the music marketing secrets image on the right, then enter your name and email, and boom, you're on the list. Again, that's at thebuzzfactor.com. And if you'd like to support my ongoing efforts to educate, inspire, and empower creative people around the world, please consider becoming a patron. Just go to patreon.com slash bobbaker, without the hyphen there. All these links and the stuff I talked about will be in the show notes of the podcast or in the video description on YouTube. Thanks again for listening. Please share this podcast or this video with your friends who could really use a boost of inspiration. Thanks for all you do to create great music and share it with the world. I'm Bob Baker saying so long for now. Crazy.